welcome back uh, here at the house with David uh, Leroy Huntsaker. And uh, we're talking about his book titled St. Anthony's, A Monastic Oasis in the Arizona Desert. Yeah, this, this book is a must have for any photographer. The, um, the agreement, David shot this book over 13 years. And the agreement he had with the monks was um, no flash, all natural light. The images in here are absolutely just to die for. From um, so let's talk about page four. Y'all you know, look at this. Look at this, Paul. Can you zoom in on this shot right here for us? See, so, yeah, shooting in the low light. I didn't want to. I wanted to remain as unobtrusive as possible. You know. In any form of ceremony, I don't care what culture it is, you don't want to be the center of attention. You want that, you know, because this is a religious ceremony that they're doing. Right. And so I, you know, I wanted to record it, document it, uh, but not become a centerpiece of it. Um, and so I tried to be as quiet uh, and not create any, you know, and they got used to me. You know, the, the, they, they got very used to me. And yeah. I would just keep going out and visit after visit. No plan, really. I never knew what I was going to find each time. It was just you go out and you discover something. You wander around. And, you know, the only time I was ever invited out was uh, on the first day out there, um, I photographed a monk. He was 93 years old. And they figured I should start with him because he was so yeah. at peace with the world. Yeah that he would, you know, he would be honored to have me photograph him, which he was. Well, a year later, he passed away, and they called me in the middle of the night and asked me to come and photograph his funeral, which had never been photographed. Wow. Uh, uh, when a, a monastic funeral had never been photographed. And so I was honored to go out and actually photograph that. And again, low light, stay as unobtrusive as possible, and, and record it. That was actually shot on film. So this project started on film uh, because... Digital didn't really exist right. in 2003. It was still in its infancy. Yeah. Uh, and then as you know, time evolved, I switched over to digital because digital lets me shoot in low light. Right. So I knew there was images I could never take until digital or technology got me there. So I just had to be patient. Did, is, is that sequence in this book? Or yes, it is. Yeah, there's a... There's a Why did they make the, the decision to... to Photograph a funeral uh, because he was very, you know. There's different levels of monks and fathers that reach different, you know. You might say enlightenment or whatever. He was at the highest level, wow. and this man was very interesting. You know, the backstory on him is as it is. His village in in Greece was being exterminated by the Nazis in World War II. He led a revolt as a teenager, and saved his people. Wow. And part of him making atonement, even though for taking lives, was to become a monk. Wow. That's an amazing story. Yeah. Yeah. What an honor. And we, we have some lenses here. And I want to talk a little bit about, let's go to this lens over here. This is the 85 Prime, Nikon 85 Prime. Ooh. <laughs> right? Yeah, this 1. is the real. Yeah, yeah. 1.4, man. This yeah. is the real thing. Tell us about what shot you get with that. Well, this is the type of shot that you're going to a be able to shoot in low light, and uh, and there is, I will show you an image from the from the book that was made with that uh, that I couldn't have made otherwise. But it's basically a, a low light lens, but it's also a lens where subject sharp, background's out of focus, uh, because sometimes you don't want everything in the scene sharp. Right. And you, what do we call that photography? They call, I, call, I call it forced perspective. Okay. The, another term is bokeh, but that's not one of my favorite terms. Okay. Yeah. Right. But yeah, it's... Depth of field. Depth of field. Yeah. yeah. Basically, you're telling the, the, the viewer, this is what I want you to, yeah. to pay attention to. Everything else is extraneous. Yeah. When you take that shot, are you looking for that or does that just present itself and then you know the dimension? Um, it's like I see it. You know, no, most of my shots, or almost all of my shots, are not prearranged. It's just me capturing what's there. But in my head, I see it. You know, I, I see how I want to photograph that or that particular situation, and it happens. Um, 
Like you see the print version of what that. I see it in my head. Yeah, I see it. I see it. It's like it's like the songwriter that hears the song in his head before yeah. he even writes it. Yeah. You know, it it's it's just it's simply that. And I will say that as a documentary photographer, I do very little post. So what you see is the way it was shot, the way it was. I don't, you know, if you got a smudge on your face, it stays. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't correct anything. Yeah, I agree. That can become a bad habit. That's right. Of right. thinking, you know, in film school, that's the first thing. Uh, yeah, I want you don't. to know that it's reality, yeah. that it's truth. Yeah. You know, I want my image to be truth. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's that whole school of, oh, fix it in post. That's, that's right. That's not where it's Shoot at. it right. Shoot it right. Shoot it right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fish eye. Fish eye. 16 millimeter. 2.8? Uh, 2.8. That's yeah. my rock and roll. Get the whole crowd in when I'm in a tight space. Wow. Lens. Not a lens I use a ton, yeah. but it's very good for, for what I use it for. Yeah. And so this is this is all this is right from your bag. Yeah, this, this is this is your go-to bag. This is my right yeah go-to. I have thirteen lenses, but and that again before I go out, yeah, I'm thinking in terms of what am I doing that day? What's important? If I take something in the bag, I'm probably going to use it. Right. I don't want to carry one ounce more than I need to. Yeah. It's this stuff's heavy enough as it is. So the 105. That's 2.8. 2.8 yeah. mi micro. That's my hands land. That's oh. what I like to take pictures of people's hands. Details, yeah. intimate details of the of the subject, and when they give you the right to get close enough to photograph them, and you need to earn that. Yeah. I love earning the right to get close to somebody and photograph them. Yeah, I know. I was, as I was going through your book, those are the shots I always look at. <laughs> the hand shots. Yeah, I I, I I I love the hand shots. Hand me that lens over there. Yeah, this is a 20, 20 millimeter. So it's a wide. So this end. is the 20, the wide. And yeah, this but is it's a 1.8. So it wow. can be wide, which will give you a lot of depth of field. It can be fast, 1.8, which will still blur out some of the background. And what what pictures from the book do you have? Uh, the, with this the one, cover? Uh, yeah, I was actually did shoot the cover with that. Um, I, you know, the cover was an interesting day. That was. An Tell interesting. me about it. Well, I was, um, I was. Eight, the, the monastery is 85 miles from where I live. And I could see that there was a storm. And I could see that there was interesting light. So I just barreled there. And I got there and I could see that something interesting was going to happen. That, you know, with this, you know, this th uh, chapel at the top of the hill. And then all of a sudden I pulled over really quick, grabbed my camera. And about the time I grabbed the camera, the shaft of light came through the clouds and hit that. I took two frames and it went away. <laughs> oh man, let me see this. Look at this, y'all. I mean, this is what photographers, this is what ruins our lives. This is why we get divorces and go broke. That's right. And <laughs> end up living alone because of this thing right this. here. We right. have to do it. <laughs> yeah, and when we do it, it's like that great feeling where you just want to dance. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing. There isn't anything like that. Wow, what a shot! Saint Anthony's, uh, the oasis in the uh, Arizona yeah, desert. Yeah, Greek Orthodox yeah. monks that live out there. Yeah, about about forty five of them. Once again, brother. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you so much. Keep it up, man. Great job. So just let things roll for a minute.